Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today I want to do a big uh, shootout of what can be cut and at what speed with the 10 watt plus endurance laser. I'm really happy with the laser overall, I've made a bunch of videos about it, I've made a lot of different projects with it, I've built a hurdy-gurdy and uh, many many other uh, things. Uh, there's been multiple iterations of me upgrading the system behind it. Uh, but I haven't really done any intensive uh, testing in a long time of what can you cut, how fast can you cut uh, different materials. So today I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different things. Some of the materials I have in front of me here is uh, 3mm plywood, 4mm plywood and even all the way up to 8mm plywood. Uh, I have acrylic, uh, I have leather, paper, uh, some foam, also engraving on powder coated metal and uh, painted metal and all of that good stuff. Before I get into the video though, I want to give a big thanks to Endurance Lasers for sponsoring this uh, test. And uh, if you want to get your own Endurance Laser, make sure to go check them out below. They make really high quality laser of a whole range of different wattages depending on what kind of budget you have. Uh, make sure to go check them out. Uh, if you use my link uh, down below, then you get 50 bucks off and free shipping on any order over $200. Now to start off, uh, I wanted to use a test piece that is fairly quick to cut since I knew I was going to have to do a whole bunch of different uh, iterations and uh, cut many many of them so I didn't want to like wait five minutes every time and uh, I thought it was kind of cool to uh, choose this puzzle piece uh, that way I can then take all the uh, successful test cuts and ass assemble them into one thing uh, that's just kind of why I chose this. Now, I started off with 3mm uh, plywood, which is uh, kind of the thing I uh, probably cut the most uh, on the laser, as it is pretty quick to do and you can do a lot of fun things with it. Now, I'm gonna uh, tell you all the different speeds and power settings that I used, but one thing to keep in mind is that the actual uh, speed that you can run out of power uh, will vary greatly. Even just within a single piece of plywood, uh, I've done uh, tests where uh, I cut it on one side of the sheet and it went through perfectly and in a diff slightly different location it didn't quite go through uh, just because there might be a, like a knot or a slightly harder part of the wood uh, in there or something. So uh, when I actually do bigger pieces I usually uh, dial down the speed quite a bit uh, just so I can be 100% sure that I'm going to go through everywhere. But the numbers I'm going to give you now is just kind of like uh, the ideal case. Uh, that means that the laser has been perfectly focused and uh, the piece of wood there uh, doesn't have like any imperfections or knots in it that will make it to cut more difficultly. Now it will also depend on like your exact laser, it might not be uh, exactly the same even if you have a 10 watt plus as well and uh, your control software, there's a lot of different variables so take these numbers with a grain of salt, it's more, more of like, like a comparison in between the different materials than like an absolute number uh, that you can just plop into your own uh, cutting software. So with cutting plywood, there is kind of uh, two different uh, camps that you can go to. Either you just have the laser uh, and just get it set up and you don't have an air assist yet. And uh, for most materials, I don't use my air assist, but on wood, uh, I do. Like basically always when I'm cutting wood. And the reason that it isn't even necessary that it cuts that much better. Uh, like uh, throughout the testing, I've been maybe able to get away with like 50 uh, millimeters uh, a minute uh, faster speed which is only marginal that's maybe like 10 20 percent uh, compared to cutting without an air assist but what it does give you is a much much cleaner cut uh, just looking at some of these samples on top uh, the ones that have all the burning all around and look like there was like a fire going on that's when i did not use an air assist and the ones that have just very sh thin sharp uh, dark lines with no smoke all around, uh, that's where I use the air assist. Now, with my uh, 10 watt uh, plus machine, actually, even if I do not have an air assist, there still is kind of in a way a bit of an air assist. Uh, that's just the cooling fan blowing down and that also blows away the smoke uh, 
which is part of the reason why you can see this uh, gradient of the smoke uh, going into one direction. Uh, if I block this, uh, the smoke goes more all around, but it also doesn't dissipate as much and actually impairs the, the cut more. So even just having a little bit of ventilation to blow the smoke out of the way definitely is a good thing. If you're uh, wor worried about uh, the marking on top of the wood, uh, but you just don't have an air assist and you can use some masking tape over top and uh, this doesn't add much uh, thickness to the cutting itself. Uh, and then after the fact, you can just peel off the masking tape and there will be no smoke residue. But also the cut itself is just uh, slightly less charred and a bit cleaner when you do use an air assist. So the numbers that I came up with for 3mm plywood with an air assist is that uh, at 200mm a minute with a single pass, uh, sometimes it's enough to cut through but not really uh, all that reliably. So uh, bumping it down to 175 uh, gives me basically all the time that it's through but sometimes there is like a tiny bit that I have to like push out or cut away or if I go all the way down to 150 millimeters a minute uh, the pieces basically just drop out and uh, work perfectly so like if I do a big piece then I'll probably run it at 150 millimeters a minute just so that I don't have a bunch of cleanup to do afterwards but if you like in a time crunch and you don't mind uh, having to use a knife to clean up one or two spots, then you can also get away with like 175. That's perfectly fine. Without the air assist, uh, I also tried 150 and it also worked just uh, not quite uh, always dropping out. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a push, but uh, it's not a huge difference. You can maybe bump it down to 140 or something if you want it to drop out every time. Then there is an alternative to how I actually usually uh, run plywood and that's not one slow pass but multiple faster passes. And what I found uh, best is, was uh, around uh, 350 millimeters a minute two passes. Uh, that essentially gives the same power as one pass at 175 but uh, while well, 175 does, did not uh, necessarily drop out or wasn't quite through, I found that uh, doing two passes at 350 actually uh, on average uh, gave a uh, cut that went through more and was more reliable. If I were to do a bigger thing, I might bump it down to like 325 or 300 uh, just to be on the safe side, but uh, 350 uh, did cut through basically all the time. And if you are not using an air assist, uh, I can even more recommend doing multiple passes as uh, there I did not really see any uh, difference between the two anymore. Plus if you go faster, then you also give the wood less uh, chance to start burning. So you definitely want to do uh, two quicker passes or even three even quicker passes if you're not using an air assist and you will get definitely better results than, uh, whether, than just doing one uh, slow pass. Moving up to 4mm plywood, not much changes, just the importance of an air assist uh, increases a lot uh, uh, with the thickener, more thick material as it just, just like the depth that the laser has to penetrate down is a lot more and that gives more places for smoke to accumulate and block the light beam. So the differences are uh, a bit bigger uh, the thicker the material you, you get with the uh, performance of cutting but still like just in doing two uh, passes all around uh, ideally uh, on four millimeter plywood and going at 300 millimeters a minute instead of 350 so a little bit slower but not that bit much of a difference and then what i was actually quite surprised about i hadn't really uh, thought that this would work uh, quite as well but eight millimeter plywood uh, it's no big deal at all. It's, I mean, it takes a while. I did uh, three passes at 125 millimeters a minute each, which is quite a long time to, to go through. Uh, like, that's about three times as much as, uh, or a bit more than three times as much time as to cut three millimeter plywood. But considering that it is almost three times as thick, this is actually a pretty good number. And uh, 
as long as uh, you're using an air assist, the edges are even quite clean and uh, very straight. Like, there was not much of a thick burn line as I've experienced before with other lasers. Uh, now, without an air assist, there is uh, quite a bit more charring and a bit of wider path. And you do need to bump down uh, your speed uh, quite a bit. And, or basically just do many, many more passes uh, at a uh, quicker speed. That is probably even better. But I can totally see uh, cutting 8mm plywood with a 10 watt plus endurance later, so like fairly regularly if that's something that is useful for your application. It takes a while, but you get quite nice results. And these, all these plywoods are uh, the, the fairly uh, soft uh, kind of plywood. If you do something like birch plywood, uh, then it will take quite a bit longer to cut through, as it just takes more power and it is harder to cut. But like the just general uh, kind that you get at most hardware stores that is cheaper will cut very well. Then moving on to acrylics, we start to notice a limitation of this blue laser uh, application. Uh, all diode lasers that you can buy are uh, the blue laser light. Uh, compare that to uh, most CO2 lasers uh, which are in the infrared spectrum. And the big difference there is that whatever looks clear or white to you also looks clear or white uh, to the laser. And what that means that if you try to cut clear, clear acrylic, it will not work. Uh, the laser light will just go through and not cut it at all. Uh, compared to uh, infrared spectrum, uh, at which uh, clear acrylic actually is uh, not clear anymore at all. And the light cannot penetrate and therefore is cutting it. So if you want to cut clear acrylic, you will have to go with a CO2 laser. There's just no way around it. But if you want to cut acrylic that is not clear and like the darker the better, or like more reddish uh, colors are also more opaque uh, to the blue light as they oppose, oppose it. So like this dark red, uh, even though it is still uh, slightly transparent, actually cuts quite well. Uh, it's very similar in color to some of the slave laser safety goggles that are included. So it does block the light very nicely, which means that it cuts well. Now it still needs a bit of time. Uh, I went uh, three times around at 150 millimeters a minute. That gave me fairly successful results. Uh, basically what you want to do is you want to do fairly many uh, quick passes with acrylics. As, uh, it kind of starts melting and heating up and bubbling and then even though you might have cut through uh, because the, all the stuff around it also got more warm it kind of melts back and then going over it multiple times you're actually cutting the same slot multiple times uh, and just going quicker just gives everything less time to heat up and uh, focuses more on the cutting than uh, the melting of everything around so for this uh, three millimeter uh, acrylic i'm doing three passes uh, so I guess basically a pass per millimeter uh, is, I guess, a good rule of thumb. I sadly don't have any other uh, acrylics to test with. Uh, of, there's also uh, like fully opaque ac acrylics, like fully opaque black acrylic, I'm sure will cut very nicely. I'm not too sure about white, because uh, while opaque white uh, doesn't let light through, the problem with white is that it reflects the light very well, uh, which is why it, it is uh, white. Uh, since that reflects all, basically all uh, the entire spectrum back at you. And that can be noticed extremely well when trying to cut foam. Cutting this black foam, uh, I was basically, uh, all the settings I tried to cut through it, uh, and in the end settled at like a thousand millimeters a minute at maybe like 60% uh, power. And then moving over to the white foam, which is the exact same thickness and material as the black one, except it's white. Uh, I first tried the same settings and it kind of scored it a little bit. Like if you were trying to kind of carve a pattern into it, uh, those settings would work great. Then I slowed it down more, uh, moved down to 500 millimeters a minute at full power and uh, it gave a slightly deeper score, but also a lot wider already. Like, a lot wider of uh, score than the black one uh, created while cutting, which is because the white just kind of spreads the light around more and distributes it over a larger area and reflects more of it. And that kind of makes more area uh, that has a lot of laser light, which creates a wider path, but also 
is less concentrated thereby, uh, not cutting as deeply. Um, going over it twice at 500 millimeters a minute, I uh, was able to cut almost through, uh, but leaving quite a wide trace. And then uh, what I settled on, if you absolutely have to uh, cut white foam, uh, was uh, two passes at 300 millimeters a minute, which is crazy compared to the one pass at a thousand millimeters a minute at 60% power that it took for the black uh, piece. So take that for what it is. Now cutting paper, while it is white and reflects a lot of light, it's so thin and so easily flammable that I, you can go quite quickly. Uh, I was cutting at a thousand millimeters a minute at something uh, around like 60 to 100% power and uh, but even with paper, you notice that I tried some black paper that is almost twice as thick, uh, but actually was able to use the same settings as for the thinner white paper, just because the black absorbs the energy more and is thereby easier to cut. One other fun thing to do is to work with leather. It is actually quite easy to cut leather on any uh, laser machine, as long as you just take quite a few passes. The problem with leather is it's a very organic substance and if you kind of heat it up too much it kind of starts shrinking and burning up and not being very easy to cut. Um, but even with dark leather you want to move fairly quickly uh, otherwise I've uh, experienced where it kind of almost kind of catches fire and starts burning more than actually cutting. So what I ended up was uh, I did uh, three passes around at like four to five hundred millimeters a minute, which is quite quick, but that actually gave me really good results. And uh, if I moved down to two or one passes, uh, I would have to drop the speed down way more uh, than uh, the power would uh, make me ex expect. If you want to just mark the leather instead of cutting it uh, on black leather like I did around uh, a thousand millimeters a minute at like I don't know half power roughly and on the on on, on this uh, lighter leather uh, I actually tried se uh, very similar settings uh, but I tried to like burn the whole thing in instead of just doing an outline and there you have to be careful that you don't heat it up too much uh, this is what happened here, it uh, kind of started heating up too much and that kind of pulled the leather together and started trumping it up and uh, going over the same part twice. So if you want to mark on like lighter leather uh, in a dark color, what I found that doing seven lines uh, per millimeter at 1000 or 1500 uh, millimeters per minute at maximum half power uh, gave me quite nice results. Uh, if you uh, do a bit more lines, then you get a darker image, but it, at that point already starts kind of pulling together. So you really have to do some test pieces, which sometimes can be challenging with leather projects, especially if you an, an engrave a leather phone case or a bag or something. You don't necessarily have that exact material to test with. So I still recommend doing like on an underside uh, with conservative settings, uh, a bit of a test cut, but when in doubt, just do more quicker passes with less power and uh, start building it up that way uh, which is much more controllable and will give you better results. And with that I think we're basically through the, all the different cutting the tests that I did. Uh, one last thing that I did uh, was just engraving on painted or powder coated metal. Now I've uh, done a more in-depth uh, video on uh, engraving on paint, uh, spray painted al aluminum. Uh, that's when I did the panels for my synthesizer. Uh, you can check that out if you want to see some more uh, of it. And there I was able to move quite quickly since it's just a very thin layer of spray paint, like uh, full power at maybe like two, three hundred millimeters a minute. Uh, but when you are working with powder coat, which is for one a bit more durable since it's actually kind of burnt on and oftentimes also a bit thicker, you do need to turn down the speed quite a bit. Uh, it depends a lot on what uh, process they use and how thick the powder coat is, but I have this uh, panel from, I think it's a, an old 3D printer uh, that is uh, steel uh, that is powder coated black and uh, going at 100 millimeters a minute uh, for at full power. It gave quite a nice engraving, but did not quite cut all the way through the powder coating yet. It's like very visible, but it's not shiny. 
uh, twisting the outline, going over it twice at 100 millimeters uh, gave me the like metal color that I was expecting. And when uh, engraving a larger thing, uh, I did instead of uh, going over it uh, twice at 100 millimeters a minute, uh, I just set the line spacing quite narrow. I'm doing 10 lines per millimeter, which leaves me with a very crisp image. And because they're so close together, uh, going over it once actually uh, is enough. But like this tiny little puzzle piece uh, took like 25 minutes to engrave because I had to like bump the speed down quite a lot. Now, that was a lot of information, a lot of talking, a lot of numbers. I hope this video helped you out, giving you kind of an idea of what is possible. Uh, and what I didn't uh, get into at all uh, in this video is uh, testing different lenses. Uh, as the lens you're using on your laser actually does affect the power output as well. Uh, for one, uh, different lenses will give you a different uh, fo uh, focus point for the laser. Like some lenses are focusing closer to the laser, some are further away. For cutting, it is better to have it further away because then the uh, laser beam will be more parallel, and therefore, uh, if you cut thicker pieces, uh, it will not uh, like be as wide of a cut. If you have a very close focal point, like the laser converges a lot, and the focus area is a lot less. Uh, but on the positive side, if you are doing a lot of uh, engraving on, let's say, powder coat, and you might want to consider a, laser, a lens that focuses the laser closer, as these oftentimes have a bit better power throughput, and uh, you will just have to focus the laser more exactly and won't be able to cut wood with it as easily. But I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If there are any other materials that you want to know, maybe you've tried them or something, I can leave a comment or maybe I'll do a follow-up with a video if there is enough demand. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And check out Endurance Lasers if this video piqued your interest. Thanks for watching and until next time.